Today, we're going to talk about the best example of crypto and blockchain gaming that I've seen to date, Rise Online. I'm your host, Chaos. This is the Chaos Dubs channel, and we're going to jump right into part one, downloading the game and some information. To get started in Rise Online, head over to riseonlineworld.com, and it's going to bring you to this page here. You can try for free. Now you can download the game here, but you're going to need to apply for the closed beta. So it may take a little bit of time before you can actually play the game. Several of us actually were able to get in right away. Um, I had to wait because I applied about a month ago, but it looks like they've made some more space or opened some things up because you can get in pretty quickly now. If you scroll down the page, you'll see the application for the closed beta is right here. So you can go ahead and click this application. And as usual, you can find a whole bunch of information here regarding the game. Updates, the code of conduct, the community. And just below here, you'll find out some videos from in the game. Some lore and some of the game characters. You can see some of the in-game images here. Now this is made with Unreal Engine, so your graphics are going to be a whole lot better than a lot of the stuff made with Unity. And some monsters that are in the game. Of course, the NFT market, if you choose to go there. But uh, back up to the top of the page, you can go to support where you can manage your account. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of news here. So if you're interested in, in staying in the loop, make sure you check this section out. But without further ado, let's get right into the game. Once the game is installed, you go to the directory where you installed it and you launch the Rise Online Launcher. Now it might take a while to update, it is a pretty big game, but once it's ready, you can just go ahead and hit play. And then it launches the game. And now let's move into part two, creating your character. And when you're ready, enter your username and password from the same account you created on the Rise online site, and then hit login. Now, if you've been accepted into the closed beta, it's going to look like this. You're going to be able to select a faction. You can read a little bit more about them. You'll find out, though, very quickly that Protean are all about rules and order and structure, and the Lunascars are all about disorder and anarchy. So we're going to go with Lunascar. That gives you some options here. You can choose your different type of fighter. I generally like being a mage. Fucking right. You can even choose your gender. Check that out. And she's even purple. How perfect is that? Here in the character creation screen, you'll find a massive amount of customization options. We're not going to go through all of them here, but uh, I'll give you a few just so you can see kind of what you can work with. And with that, we're going to roll right into part three, getting started in Rise Online. This game is basically like RuneScape and Ultima Online brought into the modern age. All right, well, right off the bat, it's super impressive for a first impression here. This looks great. Oh, neat. So you can use arrow keys to run around, or you can just click your mouse. This Rise shop appears to be a testing bed for a lot of the high-end items that you would get later on in the game, either through grinding for them or through purchasing NFTs of these items. This shop features both pets and mounts as well. The pets each have their own skills. For example, Ego, he loots enemies for you, so it saves you some time. And I've seen one of the other pets actually taking down enemies. And here I'm going to go with several mounts and a set of wings. So at the bottom, you go to character. You can see your pets and mounts.
That's fucking badass. You can see NFTs. You can see your friends. You can see information about your clan. Information about crafting, tailoring, life skills. So this is your skill tree. And character info. So here is where you have your stat points. And I've got 227 unused stat points. Yeah. Save the rest of those stat points for now. Put a bank here. And if you upgrade your weapons and armor here at the forge, they become more valuable. Some armor. Gonna equip these rings. Oh, that's a pendant. Okay. And then some earrings. Classic fire damage. And now, part four, heading out on your first easy quest. Just run over this way here, back to the center of town, and just head outside the gate, and you'll see this guy here. He's got a whole bunch of kill quests for you. It's going to be the perfect intro to the game and how to fight and how to really get moving into this crazy world. And this game has so many enemies, it's absolutely incredible. We're going to go through some scenes here that are going to show you just a little taste of what this game has to offer. As you're out exploring, you can find other towns and they're going to have more quests available for you there. You can also teleport between locations to get around a little bit quicker. And we're in Dorian right now, so this is a bit of an easier area. We're going to talk about the more difficult area in just a little bit. But first, more cosmetic upgrades. pretty, I like those. Alright, that's better. If you head back out to where the quests are, you're going to see another lady across from the first guy. And this quest is pretty cool. You, if you find the Twitch pieces, it's going to allow you to unlock a subscription to your favorite streamer from the game devs. These guys are definitely attacking me now. I haven't been able to find one yet, and neither has my crew, and we've been playing for a lot of hours between us. The drops are definitely worth it. Now instead of just whacking people with my staff, I am a mage after all. It's time to use some magic. Here you can upgrade your school's magic, and if you decide to stick to just one, like fire for example, you'll be able to unlock more powerful spells using your points. I decided to split mine up to demo a few different spells, but uh, I find fire so far is the most effective. And with that, 
we're going to get right into part 5, heading out on hard quests. Welcome to Lunascar. There's many enemies here that you will not be able to tackle on your own or even as a duo. Some may require large groups, although many are tackleable by yourself. But definitely don't come here without a lot of health potions and make sure your armor and weapons are fully repaired. There is a ton of spells available if you're a mage. And I quickly learned that area attack spells have huge value. Now we are cooking. Time for some Cajun barbecue. And now over here we got some poisonous scorpions. At least they're not venomous, right? With that, we're gonna move into part six of this video. Dungeons. This is where it gets really hard. So you'll see you have solo, group, and clan dungeons available. We're just going to try a solo dungeon. Now you'll notice the timer there and the percentage. you got to complete the whole dungeon within the time limit and it's not going to be easy. But those who are victorious are rewarded like royalty. Each enemy drops a ton of gold and NFTs. And I'm not even sure what you all get when you complete the dungeon, but you get a ton of experience as well, leveling up your character. Die and suffer the consequences. Return to the start and all the remaining enemies heal fully, making this way more difficult. Now with that terrible performance, we're going to move into part 7, crafting and cooking. These weekend markets are really crazy, a ton of people set up all over the place to buy and sell whatever they've harvested. That includes all kinds of armor and weapons and resources. Speaking of resources, you can harvest resources to begin crafting. And once you've harvested a bunch of stuff, you can start crafting. Here, we're cooking some corn because it only requires one ingredient. And all the food that you cook is going to give you buffs and debuffs. Now take the resources you've found and start crafting them into usable materials. First, we're going to create some copper plates. And then we're going to turn some wood into oak timber. And then we're going to create some copper sticks. And then we're going to go ahead and create some oak planks as well. And as I mentioned with cooking, it's quite the same process. It's very expensive unless you gather all your own ingredients. And yeah, cooked food, as you see here, provides buffs and debuffs to your character. Go ahead and sell the things you've created and increase your bank stash. And now, for the part I'm sure you've all been waiting for, NFTs and play to earn mechanics. Pretty much everything you see at this vendor here, these are all NFTs and this is as I mentioned earlier, a test bed for all of these items. 
That includes mounts, pets, wings, and tons of cosmetic items. As I mentioned, monsters will drop NFTs. These NFTs can later be sold for real value. Enemies will also drop tokens, and these are going to be worth real world value once the game releases. Currently, they're just using them as a test bed as well. And if you view the shop, you can see what NFTs can be bought. Wings, mounts, pets. And you can sell your rare items on weekends at the markets. And that pretty much concludes this video for today. I hope this one has been informative and entertaining for you. I think Rise Online is probably the most promising crypto slash blockchain game that I've seen yet. By far, it's got the most content, it's got the best graphics, it's got a whole bunch of players, and it's got a working product. I think it's a really exciting project. And if you're not into this, absolutely get into this. Try it out for yourself because I think this can appeal to absolutely everybody. And it is just a ton of fun. Thanks for watching. We're going to see you next Thursday at 11.30 a.m. for part number eight. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Be grateful. And we'll see you then. Bye-bye.